Okay, here is our question. Um, we want to put a space probe into an elliptical orbit, so it dips low above the Earth over Australia and further out, further out. What we want to know is how fast it will be travelling at the lowest point. Okay, so let's start with the diagram. We'll need the Earth, and we'll need the orbit. Now here's its closest approach, only 100 kilometers up, and out there it's a bit further. So that's 1,000 kilometers. That's only 100 kilometers. And we know its velocity when it's at its furthest out, slowest point, which is 10,000 kilometers per hour. the velocity here, we don't know. The radius of the Earth is also important. That's 6,400 kilometers. Okay, how would we solve a problem like this? We could do it by force. The trouble is the force is always changing, both in size and direction. Out here, there's a weak force towards the middle. As it goes in, the force is now a bit stronger. Over here, the force is very strong. So the force has changed a lot in strength and a lot in direction. So that means using the momentum principle for F equals MA to work out where it's going to move is difficult. In fact, it would need a computer. There's no way you can solve these things very easily without. So let's try something simpler. In this particular case, we could actually use angular momentum. But we haven't done that principle yet in class, so we will use the energy, which we have done. So what can energy work here? All we care about is two states, the starting state and the end state. And we don't care about how long it takes to get from one to the other. All we care about is the speed at the second state. So that sounds like an excellent energy question. We'll call this V2. And that distance there is going to be R2, and this distance here is going to be R1. Now the potential energy, we have to use the proper gravitational form here, not the approximation MGH. MGH is only valid for potential energy when the distance that things move vertically is small compared to the radius of the planet they're on. In this case, that is not true. So we need to use the full form which is the gravitational constant g, mass of the Earth, mass of the space probe, over the distance between them. Not distance squared, just distance. And kinetic energy is the usual half m v squared. Velocities are not close to the speed of light, so we don't need the full relativistic version of that. So what we do is we look at the potential and kinetic energy here and set it equal to the potential and kinetic energy there. OK, let's write down the equation. So to begin with, we have the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Gravitational potential energy, when written down the full way, is negative. To begin with, so add those together equals the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, also negative, to end with. So that is just writing down that energy is conserved. Energy before equals energy afterwards. What do we need? The quest what's the question asking us? The question is asking us how fast would the satellite be travelling when it took its air samples? So that's at its low point, which is V2. So we're off to V2. So let's work V2 out. Um, we can cancel all the masses of the space probe, because that's in every term. So cancel mass, 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 mass. Then we can multiply everything by 2. That gets rid of the halves. And puts a 2 here and a 2 there. 
and then we can rearrange so put the v squared on this side and on the left hand side and move these the, this term and this term over to the right hand side so we get that v2 squared equals so this one so it's a minus so by the time this term moves over here it'll be plus so it's g2 g m it's mass of the earth over r1 minus 2 g m over r2 and oh, that's wrong so if you've got v2 that one will have a minus and that one will have a plus and that'll be a plus v1 squared let's check that all makes sense sign wise so v2 is on the opposite side of that with a minus sign so that minus sign is correct v2 is on the same side of this with a minus sign so by the time that's moved to the other side it'll have a plus sign that's correct and v2 is on the opposite side from v1 v1 is a plus sign so it will keep its plus sign so that's an equation for v2 what we need to do is put in some numbers we know that v1 is 10,000 kilometers per hour need to convert this to meters per second so 10,000 kilometers is 10 10,000 times the number of meters in a kilometer times a thousand meters that's per hour so uh, if it's going to be per second that's a lot less than that so you divide by 60 times 60. so if we get the calculator we get 10 thousand times one thousand divided by sixty equals divided by sixty equals two thousand seven hundred and eighty roughly meters per second. Okay, let's work out R1 and R2. We know R1, the starting position, was a thousand kilometers above the surface. R1 is the radius of the Earth, 6,400 kilometers plus a thousand. And convert from kilometers to meters by multiplying by a thousand is 7400000 meters. R2, 100 kilometers above the Earth, is 6,500 kilometers from the center of the Earth, equals 6,500 meters. So now let's substitute these into the equation up there. It's very easy to make mistakes uh, when putting numbers into fairly complicated equations like this. I usually find the best way to do it is step by step, writing down each step. That way if something goes wrong you have lots of checking. I've rearranged the equation to put the two reciprocals together in a bracket, the gm outside. Um, this means you only need to work out the 2gm once. So it would be 2gm Now 1 over R2 minus 1 over R1. So R2 was 6,400 times 1,000 meters. And it's the reciprocal of that. And we'll subtract. 
seven four oh 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 reciprocal equals so that's two point one one by ten to the minus let's see so that's zero minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five minus six minus seven minus eight plus v1 squared. I will check that again. Um, that's the sort of calculation I can get, well get wrong. So 6,500 oh, 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 1 over minus 7,400 oh, 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 1 over equals and it's a different answer. I probably did get it wrong. So it's Minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the exponent is the same. Let's try it a third time. So that's said uh, one point eight seven. Let's see which one we agree with. So it's six five o o o o o one over. Minus seven four o o o o o one over oh, three different answers three different times. I think it's time to break that up into its two component sections. Well, I tried the calculation several times over on the calculator, and I find that I eventually consistently get the bottom answer. I must have typed something wrong the first time. This is something that comes with experience, knowing the sort of calculations you're likely to stuff up and knowing to check them. I know I stuff up these sort of calculations on a regular basis, so I always check them. Okay, now let's work out the 2gm. 2 times g. g is 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11. Multiplied by the mass of the Earth. So let's get the mass of the Earth. As usual, Google comes up with the right answer. The mass of the Earth is about 6 by 10 to the 24 kilograms. So if we have 2 times 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11 times 6 by 10 to the 24 equals the so 2 gm is 8 by 10 to the let's count 1 2 3 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 6 by 10 to the 8 up 10 to the 14 times 14. 1.87 by 10 to the minus 8 plus V1 squared. V1 was 2780, so 2780 squared. It's 7.7 .7 by 10 to the 6. Let's multiply the first two terms. So we have 8 by 10 to the 14 multiplied by 1.87 by 10 to the minus 8. equals one point five by ten to the one, two, three, four, ten to the naught, ten to the one, ten to the two, ten to the three, ten to the four, ten to the five, ten to the six, ten to the seven. 
plus 7.7 .7 by 10 to the 6. So we'll add 7.7x6 7 equals 2.3 by 10 to the 7. Take the square root of that. End up with v1 equals 4760 meters per second.